Wednesday morning. So mm-hmm. we're thrilled for that. He'll tell you a little bit more about himself. And uh, But I want to pray for him before he starts. Thank you. Father God, uh, thank you for your servant here, for the way he has uh, served you, the way you've called him as, uh, as to bring us the word of God today. Lord, would you use um, what you've done in his heart as he speaks it? Would you give him clarity? Would you give him wisdom? Mm. And Lord, most of all, would you allow the Holy Spirit to work through his life mm. so that we could be encouraged today by your word? Thank mm. you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Good morning, everyone. God is good Amen. all the time. Check this out. This is weird. So um, thank you for the introduction tremendously for that. I'm honored and blessed to be here. And thank you tremendously for Corey. Where's Corey? Thank you tremendously, brother, for your leadership and for this invitation to Ashlyn. There you go. Oh, sorry. As well. And so um, working with me, uh, it's like trying to herd cats. Legit. So I thank you for your patience tremendously on their emails and stuff. It's like, Steve, like, take, it, like, you're, take a long time just to reply. So thank you tremendously for that and for your hospitality. So I'm very blessed and honored to be um, serving in a church called Holy Trinity Anglican Church. I've been an um, Anglican priest, pastor for ordained in 2016. So it'll be eight years in December. And so many times when I say, God is good, everyone's like, He is good, but what's your, what's your point here? So like, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. So thank you for actually applying for that, because sometimes people are like, yeah, we already know he's good. Like, what's, <laughs> give us something new, Steve. Like, something new. So um, may I borrow a, am I allowed to take yeah. some music then? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for this. So, yes, so I'm very blessed and honored in order to be here. Um, married 13 years, and so today's my wife's birthday, so happy birthday, hon. Um <laughs> I married up, legit, I did marry up. As all my friends know, like, yeah, Steve, you don't have to do no lottery, no gambling, like, you won the jackpot a hundredfold. Like, <laughs> you can walk away from all that stuff. So um, to my kids as well, who are watching tremendously, thank you for, for being here online, but in person, and let's, let's pray. Holy Almighty God, thank you for today, and thank you for the rain that comes down upon the earth. Reminds us that you are always in control, that your power continuously to reign upon us and in us and for us. So help us, Lord, to always listen, listen to the call upon our lives, and that we call others into your grace and into mercy and into your love. We humbly ask this in the name of Jesus, who's King, Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Am I allowed to move this phone? Okay, I don't want to. <laughs> All right, I don't touch that. It's not my stuff, so I don't want to break it. So it's... um. July 1941, it's Auschwitz. And so there is a a prisoner who escapes a particular cell block. And so the commandant is irate, obviously. And so he gets that cell block and lines them all up and says, how dare you try to escape from my supervision? And because of this insubordination, because of this treachery, I'm going to choose 10 of you, and you're going to go to this underground bunker, and you guys are going to die. No food. No water, no bathroom. Go into this pit and die. And so he goes and says, I'm choosing ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> like that was like, choose him. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Ron's like, I'm, I'm saved. Ten. And so one of the ten is freaking out, rightly so. Please, I have wife, I have kids. Please, I beg you, I don't, please, please, not me. And the commandant's like, I don't care. This guy escaped my supervision. All of you have to suffer. And so the guy's screaming and yelling, I want to see my wife, I want to see my kids. Please, I beg to you. And so one gentleman steps forward and says, send me, I'll go. And so the commandant's like, bewildered, shocked, in awe at the same time. And he goes up to him, do you know what you're volunteering for? Yes, sir, I do. You do know you're going into a pit to die. Yes, sir. Why? Why are you going to... Do you know this man? No, sir. But you're willing to go into a pit in order to die for this guy. You have no idea who it is. Yes, sir. I don't have any kids. I don't have a wife. I'm a Christian. Said me. I'll go. So the commandant's like, okay, you're sure? Yes, sir. Get in. All ten are thrown into this pit, underground bunker, and the door closes. God does not call the equipped. 
he equips us. We're called. So last week, there was two readings, and thank you, Ashlyn, once again. So last week, if you remember, there's Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, but also John 3, 1 through 17. If you remember, it's 742 B.C., by which King Uzziah is dead, and there's hopelessness in the land. So people are freaking out, rightly so. Our king is dead, an invading army can come and once again take us as captive. What's going to be? My land, my livestock, my family, my wife. What's going to happen to our kingdom that King Uzziah ruled and reigned? And it's in that space that God calls Isaiah. He says, come. And he shows Isaiah the hem of his garment that fills the temple. Not the garment, not his foot, not his head. The hem of God's garment fills. You know how big God is? If the hem of the of his hem of his garment is filling the temple. Whoo, God is good. And so it fills the temple by which he is in awestruck, and then he sees all these seraphs by which are chanting, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. He's in awestruck by which that the cover their faces. Why? The beauty, the majesty, the glory of God. It is also here, remember from last week. A seraph comes up to Isaiah and takes tongs and places a piece of coal upon his lips. Not as punishment, but to purify his lips. Why? Because he's now about to proclaim and profess a dangerous message about a dangerous God. And so when it is placed upon his lips and then the voice of God says, Okay, who can I send? Who will go for us? Send me. I'll go. And he's called into a new life, into a new call, into a new commitment, into a new covenant as he goes. Remember as well from last week from John 3, 1 through 17, we have Nicodemus, good old Nicodemus. And the brother's going in the middle of the night just to go see this rebel rouser, to see this itinerant rabbi. Obviously, he won't go in the daytime. Like, I'm not going to have my boy see me talking to this knucklehead guy, like this young preacher talking about resurrection and talking about redemption and talking about this new covenant. Oh, no, no, no. I'll go like at 2 o'clock at night and go up to him and say, hey, listen, you, you talk about some weird stuff here. And Jesus says, yeah, you must be born from above. Born from above? I mean, reborn? Born again? What kind of sick freak are you? <laughs> I got to go back into my mother in order to get reborn. He goes, no, no. Nicodemus, you're supposed to be one of the smart ones, aren't you? Right? Well, yeah. And you don't get it. So you're thinking about physical rebirth. I'm talking to you about spiritual rebirth. It's by water and by the spirit that you're now called to be reborn. And he lives into this call so much so he remember if he pushes back against his colleagues, religious officials, by which he says, I too want to be with you, Joseph Arimathea, and lay down his body. I too agree that he is the Son of Man, the Son of God. I too believe that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Anointed One. I too believe that I must be called into a new life. So that's from last week, from Isaiah, but also John 3. So let's put a pause into scripture and let's go back to grade one. Who wants to remember elementary school? Okay, everyone, some people are like, no, I got trauma, trauma, trauma. <laughs> grade four was bad, grade four. Maybe it was. If it was, I do apologize. For me, I loved it. Just crayons and drawing and throwing stuff and, hey, let's go play dodgeball, yeah! <laughs> and so we're in this. So imagine you're able to, if you're a Doctor Who fan, you're in the TARDIS. If you're a Back to the Future fan, you go back and you're DeLorean. And you're back and you see your former self in the schoolyard. And you're like, okay. You try to find a way how to get your former self without getting caught. And so you get in, you find yourself, you, you pull yourself aside, and go, okay, listen, hey, buddy. Listen for a second. You're about to be called to a dangerous call. Just be careful. Now, what would your former self say to your present self? You say, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? What your, your grade one, you're like, who, who the? What would your former self honestly say to your present self? And you said, well, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, 100%. So I know my former self, as a smart aleck, would be like, what happened to us? Like, what's on your face? You got ear, dude, what happened to us? 
And you're married? Good for you. How many kids? How many kids? Have? We got seven. We got seven kids. What happened to us? But then, knowing myself, okay, I got three questions, Steve, if you're really Steve. So it's a, a dangerous call. Yes. Okay. How much money are we going to make? Money. Whoo, buddy. Uh, Jack, you're not going to make much money out of this. <laughs> It's not going to be, it's not, it's not, no, you're not going to make a lot of money. Go, okay, okay, okay. Money's not everything. I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, the applause of the people, right? We're going to get congratulated by masses of people. The communities will love us. No, no, actually, you get more criticism and more kick in the pants and actually pat in the backs. So, no. Okay, okay. We're 0 for 2. All right, last one then, if you're really Steve. Are we getting a uniform? Like a nice uniform to wear? No. No, no, no uniform. <laughs> then why am I doing this? Why am I in school? Like, what's the point of all of this? Are you serious? You're not getting, money is poor. That's correct. I'm getting chastised, criticized, and persecuted. Yeah, you, you could be coming that. And I don't even get a nice uniform? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want this call. I'm good. <laughs> and he'll, I probably mean he'll just run off and write, Mom! Mom! This heavy set dude! Mom! And so I remember way back in grade four, grade five, we had show and tell. Or even another one was basically, what do you want to become when you grow up? And had that Bristol board, and you put on your beautiful thing, you know, I want to do this, and I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a pastor. No one, no one ever says that. Like, no one, no one, unless you're Samuel, unless you're John the Baptist, you never say, I want to be an ordained minister. No, you don't. Don't lie. Don't lie, buddy. Lying is a sin. It is. And so with that, there's always one kid that, in my experience, is always one kid. One kid who always says one of the four. I want to be a cop. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a pilot. I want to be an astronaut. <laughs> always one kid who always says one. Cop, firefighter, pilot, astronaut. Remember, if you're five, you're six, you're seven, you're eight, you're nine, you're ten years old, you want to live into that call. You have no understanding about the struggle and the strife and the journey in order to become a pilot or a cop or the danger of becoming a firefighter, but you love, you love serving and guiding and helping and instructing and protecting people. You're like, yeah, send me. I'll go. And so with this call that we're called into this life, be mindful of this. The call that Jesus calls upon all of us is a covenantal one. It's a commitment, but also it's a challenging one. Tell me one call in Scripture by which the person's like, uh, I don't know about this one, Lord. <laughs> Can we go a different route? How about a different time? <laughs> I'm kind of busy right now, Lord. It's 2 o'clock and I want to get some lunch, but you know, not right now, Lord. It is a call of covenant and commitment. It's a challenging one, but also there's an anointing upon one's life. In a couple of seconds, we'll get to Deuteronomy. And thank you. Thank you for reading it. If you remember, before the Ten Commandments are spoken, the people are consecrated. If you go to Exodus 20, the people are literally consecrated before Moses says, here are the Ten Commandments. Not suggestions, not questions. Here are Ten Commandments. Here's a new calling upon your life. So there's anointing upon this call. It's also a call on listening. How many of us actually attentively listen to Almighty God? Listen to the Holy Spirit by which he corrects us and guides us. Those times he has to chastise us, counsel us, convict us. How many times do we actually say, Lord, as you say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Do you really want the Holy Spirit to come? Because God don't play, and he takes no prisoners. Let's be honest. If you read scripture from Genesis to Revelation, if he calls you, get ready for some pain. If you remember with Paul and his call. And remember, and I said, whoa, you're, you're bringing who to my house? Don't worry, he's okay, he's changed, he's confirmed. If you remember in that conversation, Almighty God, Jesus, with Ananias, he said, but he's going to suffer for me. Shipwrecked, beaten, imprisoned. He literally tells Ananias, don't worry, you're safe. But that brother's in trouble. But he'll still listen and live out his call. So there's commitment, there's a conviction, there's a covenant, there's an anointing, there's a listening. But one thing we always forget, there's a legacy. 
there's a legacy in this call. I was blessed by Corey, but also by Ashan in saying, for this week, for this sermon series, is on discipling others. You have a call to leave a legacy. Remember that commissioning, it says, go, go into the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but also say, you better make disciples. I want followers in my name, for my family, in my call. Are we now living out this call? Are we actually creating a legacy of brothers and sisters in Christ by which is the family of God? It's not my agenda, your agenda, my mission, your vision, my church, which I got to go backwards here. So in Anglican Church, give you a heads up here. We're very fixated with our buildings. You may have not realize that. But which now many, many of our churches are closing down. A whole bunch of reasons for this. One of them, I think, is apostasy. I'll just say right now. Or basically, we don't really believe. I'll be honest with you. Or we change doctrine for our own cultural liking. And so with that call that we've dropped, I believe, side note here, God's like, been fun, but you ain't doing it. You're not baptizing in my name, in our name. You're not even actually living out the call. So why should I continue to bless you? Why should I continue to strengthen you? Why should I continue to guide you and instruct you if you continuously continue to go against my word? You don't want to live with this call. It's all good. I still love you, but I got some brothers and sisters over here I actually want to listen i got some sons and daughters over here. Actually, they'll, they'll build a church. All they need is five people, one person, three people, ten people. It doesn't matter. They will actually live out their call. They actually want to be my disciples. So it's been fun, X church but you got to go. My personal opinion. And so with this call, with this covenant, with this anointing, with this legacy, with this love, with this listening, yes, we're supposed to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but also making children of the Most High God, speaking truth in and of this call, calling out wickedness and sin and debauchery, edifying and empowering those people who are actually struggling and trying to do their best in order to glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so with a school analogy, my former self freaking out, also the call by which I spoke of before, here is the Ten Commandments by which they're called into a new covenant. Remember in this, Exodus 20, Moses goes up, gets a tower, comes back down, people are doing debauchery, he freaks out, he breaks them, he's like, are you, are you people serious? I've gone for 40 days, but it's a long time, dude, like, come on, you know, like, we got bored. He breaks it, he says, okay, I gotta go back up now, thanks a lot. I gotta go back for 2.0. Goes back up, gets it, it's called the bread of heaven, they're given food, there's water from the rock, they give water, interesting, Jesus, the bread of heaven, living water. Kind of odd. Comes back down and he says, here are ten commandments, almighty God. Here is the new calling upon your lives. You're now being consecrated. You said about the word sanctified. You're now set apart to be holy. I want the other nations to know that I am the real God. If you remember that story, the calling of Elijah going about against King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, which is funny. If you actually read it, it's unbelievably funny. Sick, but really funny. Ahab He's like, I'm going to kill this guy. He's horrible. Da, 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 da. And Jezebel, yeah, got 450 prophets. And Elijah's like, okay, you want to play a game? Let's play a game. You call your God. And he has to light up this altar. Go and do it. One hour passes. Two hour passes. Three hour passes. He's like, I don't think he's listening. You got to get a little louder. They start cutting themselves and doing a whole bunch of nonsense. He's like, okay, we're done. We're done. Look, it's been a good time. I've been called by the Most High God. So listen, drench that, buddy. Put water all upon it. Make a moat so the water is actually leveling up. This thing is wet, wet. Like wet like the Pacific Ocean wet. It says, okay, so let me get this straight. If I win, I get to kill you, right? But you won't win. If my God lights this up because I trust in my call, and I trust in my God, I win, you die, correct? 
Yeah. <laughs> Y'all dead. And so are we willing to live into that kind of call? Remember, this is the same God who called another prophet, another student of Elijah. If it's 2 Chronicles 18, Micaiah. If you remember Micaiah, who was a student of Elijah. He had four students, Elijah. One is Elisha, another one's Micaiah. To which King Ahab once again goes against Micaiah, a student. And Micaiah knows the nonsense that King Ahab does. And Ahab is so contrite. Sorry, he is so convicted in his nonsense that he's not willing to relent. So he goes to Micaiah and says, I know you tell the truth. I know you live out your call. But I got another 400 prophets who continue to lie to me, so I will trust in their word. But I know you are actually always honest, so Micaiah, will I win this battle? And Micaiah, in his way, just like Elijah, mocks him and goes, yeah, yeah, you'll win the battle. Absolutely. You got this, you got this set. And Ahab goes, why are you lying to me? He says, okay, you want the truth? You can get killed on the battlefield. In this call, there's a conviction. Are you willing to stand up for what is right and true and just and good and holy in your call? And you're being a disciple. Will you be like an Elijah? You got 450 against you. Numbers-wise, you look really bad. But who can be against you if God is with you? You can never walk lame if Jesus is walking with you. And so how is your call with the almighty king of kings and lord of lords? So the Ten Commandments. I won't go all extensively in them. Here are Israel, the statutes and the ordinances of the Lord today. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. I was reading this for many, many times. I'm like, there's a calling in each and every single one. You've been consecrated. You've been blessed. And remember, in this time, there's 400 years you've been in slavery. Be mindful of this. Remember the, the nation and the generation that was about to go into the new land by which they could not, and they got all killed off. And even Moses had to stand on the outside to look in, which is what Joshua had to go in with his new people. Why? Mindset. They had a new calling. And so with this first commandment is, Pharaoh is not your God. I'm your God. I'm not a God who abuses. I'm not a God who misuses. I'm not a selfish God. I'm not an evil God who gives continuous wickedness. I'm a God who loves, who frees, who heals, who empowers. You've been slave for 400 years. All you know is back-breaking work. All you know is getting about two hours of sleep. All you know is saying, yes, sir, and no, ma'am. That's all you know. And now I'm the one who's going to free you. I'm going to bring you into a new calling. I'm going to love you because you think you're unlovable, but I am love. God is love. I have now given you a new calling. I am God. Those fools in Egypt, they're not God. Second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or there's the earth beneath, or there's in the water on the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquities of their parents. God, once again, in this calling, says you have carved images been surrounding you for 400 years. You've now accepted them as your gods. Images and pictures that cannot speak but I give you a new word. I give you a new mindset. I give you a new world, a new language. I give you a, a new identity. I give you a new belonging. And so in this call, once again, Almighty God says, I give you a new identity and a belonging. I've now called you out of the mindset of slavery. Now I give you a new calling, a freshness of renewal. I give you now soon a new spirit. You shall not make any wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Once again, there's a call here. Yes, do not use the Lord's name in vain. 100%. And the name of Jesus is of identity. It's of authority. It's of power. Don't misuse my kingdom. Don't misuse my identity. I am one who is giving you life. 
How dare you say I give you death? I'm the one who's giving you hope. How can you say you're now distraught? I'm the one who has now healed you. How can you say I'm bringing you sickness? I have now called you into my kingdom. I have called you to be with me. Fourth one. Observe the Sabbath day, keep it holy, for your Lord your God has commanded you. For six days you shall labor and do all work. But the seventh day, the Sabbath day, your, do- your Lord, your God, you shall not do any work. You, your children, your livestock, any of that. So remember, as a slave for 400 years, your parents worked every single day. You worked every single day. But I now call you to take a rest. Rest. Reconvene with me. Recommune with me. Reestablish a relationship with me. I've called you now just to pause and to reflect on my identity and who I am. What is my kingdom? For it's then we can have true relationship. And from that relationship, it moves into a space and a place of true religion. And from religion, then you can become my disciples. And then from being my disciples, my children, then the world will see, yeah, your God is different. You guys are always winning battles, but you guys are a bunch of farmers. Yep. How is this possible? Him. I rest in him. I rest in my call for him, to him, and with him. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that your Lord God is giving you. Honor your father and your mother. Remember those days by which you were beaten, you were bruised, you were misused, and your mom and dad protected you because they're good parents. They did whatever it took to make sure that you were safe. Honor them. Why? Because one day you'll be blessed with children as well. And I want your children to honor you. You're now called into this new relationship. You're called to be parents, called to be grandparents, called into to be brothers and sisters of Mosaic Church. But honor those who are above you. Trust them. Listen to them. Submit to them. I'll say a four-letter word now. Obey them. Ooh, he went there. Obey them because they obeyed me. You're now living in this call and you're blessed because of their call and obedience to their call. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. Neither should bear false witness against your neighbor. Neither should covet your neighbor's wife, their things, field, slaves, ox, animals, all that stuff. So for 400 years, all you knew was about beating, backbreaking work, and they stole everything from you. They always won. They took things from you by which they didn't ask you nicely. They just took it. And so now you're doing it to yourselves. Why? Live in this calling now. Remember of the Israelites. Don't steal from each other. Don't lie to each other. Don't hurt each other. Don't take another man's wife. Don't take another woman's man. Don't do this wickedness and nonsense. I've now called you out from this space and place geographically, mentally, spiritually. I've now called you out. But with every exit is an entrance. And so, yes, you're leaving this space and place of Egypt mentally and physically. But now I want to call and walk you into a new space of my glory, and of my kingdom. Let's go back to 1941, Auschwitz. So, the lid closes, boom! Commandant, all the guards laugh and say, hey, you guys are done. So for the next 14 days, that man is standing or kneeling, praying to Almighty God. Guards are amazed that he would not move from that one spot. He's singing praises to Almighty God, thanking God for this opportunity to profess and to live out his call in this worst situation. And every single day for 14 days, bodies drop. Praise be to you, God. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Even if I die at this moment, I still trust you because you're my God. You're the King, the Lord, my Messiah. And so after the 14th day, there's four men left. 
It's him and three of his brothers. So the commandant's shocked. He's like, are you serious? Like, you guys are still alive. What? Enough with this. I need this space for another prisoner, so I got some carbolic acid, and I will inject you with it. And he goes up to the last guy and says, here, here's my arm. Send me. I'll go. Maximilian Kolb, Father Maximilian Kolb, sacrificed his life for a dude he did not even know because he said, I'm a Christian. I will live into my call. I already died. I was baptized into the waters of a newness in my call, so therefore this new covenant, this new commitment, it's a challenging one by which I could have easily shut my mouth and said, not me. But because I trust in Jesus and he's promised me eternal life, I will step forward in my call, accept the consequences, but know I'm given eternal life. It is from our scriptures by which we have many men and women who have lived out their call. With God, for God, and by God. And which I'm reminded tremendously that in this call, as I said before, there's a covenant, there's a conviction, there's a commitment, there's an anointing. But in discipleship, it's always centered upon God. I hope everyone can read this. My reading, my writing is kind of like jacked up. But it's always the main character in scriptures is who? God. It's not David. It's not Adam. It's not Abraham, it's not Thomas, it's not Esther, it's not Naaman, it's God. And so with these men and women, if you remember in Hebrews, there's a pantheon of men and women who have been faithful in and by their call. So the call is before the commitment, the, com the covenant, the conviction of mighty God, the A for the anointing, the L for the listening, and the legacy of and with Jesus and to others. As you remember with Moses, I'm going to try to do this this way. I do apologize for being someone's way. Moses was called through. <coughs> he comes out of the waters, Moses, drawn out of the river. And remember, this is the same dude who at the age of 40 is like, yeah, I killed a man. I'm out. <laughs> for 40 years, he lives in the wilderness. He's shepherding, doing all the good stuff. And God's like, hey, buddy, I need you back. Yeah, I'm too old, buddy. I got a speech impediment. I got food going, cooking right now. God's like, I know you got a speech impediment, but we got work to do. And so the same man with a speech impediment who constantly pushed against God. <laughs> I can't talk very well. Okay, I'll get Aaron. You're still doing the job. Like, I'm still calling you. Like, there's no excuse here. Like, let's do this. Called through. But the waters, <coughs> the rivers are going the Red Sea, and they got a whole bunch of Egyptians coming down to get them. Get your staff and put it in. Just do it. Waters part. He walks through. They walk through. Waters crash down. So how many times in our lives, in our trials and tribulations, we're like, God, I don't know if you come through this time. I mean, you helped me last time. You helped X person, that person, this church, that church. But God, I don't know if you could do it this time. And God's like, I will make a way. I'm the almighty God, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, eternal. Are you telling me I can't do this? I've called Moses through. You're telling me I can't do this for my own child, you, my children of the Most High God? Don't play yourself. Naaman and Elijah. Oh, I love the Naaman story. Man who goes to the prophet, the great prophet, and the prophet when we come to the door. I mean, imagine you, a great warrior. You'd be told to go to, okay, I'll go to Elijah. Yep. And he wanted to come to the door. You got the servant who comes to the door. And he's like, I can bust down this door and take you both out. Are you serious? You don't have the respect to come to the door. Yeah, go to the river. Dug yourself time seven times. We're all good. Are you serious? That's a disgusting river. How dare you tell me to go there? Remember the maid servant goes, but if he told you something harder, you would do it, right, sir? Maybe. Come on, man, just go to the water, dip yourself seven times, all good. And how about Elijah? 
the both were called up. Remember, Elisha is on the ground. Please, throw down your mantle. Please, I want to continue in your working. This is the same Elisha, remember, who was called to follow Elijah, who killed his livestock and burnt his farm equipment. You know you're committed when you burn your work supplies. Remember that old saying, burn the boats. And Elijah gave Elisha three times to say, you can walk away right now, buddy. It's all good. No, no, no. Send me. I'll go. We got Daniel and his three friends. Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, and Esther. They're called to stand firm. <coughs> Remember this one. The call up. The resurrection. I am the only one who could put my life down. And I am the only one who could pick it back up. Yeah, Roman Empire. Yeah, Pharisees, Sadducees, religious. You think you guys actually planned this out? Hey, Satan, you think you planned this out? You think you got me cornered? Man, I'm all powerful, all seeing, all knowing. So, Daniel, stand firm. You must worship this idol by which then you'll be saved. No, I'd rather die. Get thrown in the lion's den, he's saved. But which obviously remember, the king's like, oh my, this is amazing, your God actually lives. And then the people who caused treachery upon Daniel, what happened to them? Got thrown into the lion's den. So much so, they even hit the ground. The lions went, gone. Don't play with God. Don't play with his calling upon your life. His three friends, they pray and say, our God can protect us in our calling. If we die in this oven, we die in this oven glorifying God. Even if he saves us from this oven, we still glorify the almighty God. Whoo! You know you got faith and trust. I'm willing to go to certain death. Maximilian Kolb, Daniel, Azariah, Mishael, Hananiah. And I'll still keep singing his praise. Esther, if you remember with Esther, by which she's a Jew, she's an Israelite. And you got Mordecai saying, how dare you be silent? We're about to die. This Haman guy wants to kill us. you got to stand up and stand firm. Go to your husband and say, this knucklehead wants to hang us and kill us all. And so she goes to her husband and says, i got an issue. Yes, my love. Yeah, your second command wants to kill me. Hmm? He does, eh? Okay, hon. Hey, Haman, let's, let's have a talk for a second. <laughs> that instrument of destruction you caused outside, you created outside, put yourself on it. Stand firm. In those moments in which the world wants to shake you, shift you, sift you from your convictions, think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, is there any other way? No, son. This is the only way to save the world. The only way to redeem humanity. The only way to reconcile all of earth. This is the only way I stand firm. Deborah and David, they're called to fight. Remember Deborah, a judge, but also David. The great story about David, the young punk kid. People always forget that it wasn't a slingshot. It was a sling. He was a sniper. So this is the same dude who killed a lion and a bear. If you remember, a bear actually moves when they attack. Remember, lion actually moves when it attacks. He's going against a man who's actually standing still in arrogance, saying, come to me, come. And he's like, oh, I'll come in the name of Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I come in the almighty God. You want to play this game? Let's go. So we're also called to fight. Fight for his kingdom, fight for his glory, fight for his beauty, fight for his majesty, fight for his forgiveness, Fight for his faithfulness. Fight for his identity. We also have Zacchaeus. We're called to come down. How often God, the Holy Spirit, calls us down from our own agendas and itineraries, our own arrogance. So give you a heads up. I don't want to freak everyone out here, but next year is a federal election. Just give you a heads up. And in two years, a provincial election. And I'm very amazed. I find it comical. I'm a sick person, 100%. But 
But two months out, it's like, hey, we can do this for you. We love you. And da 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 We're decreasing taxes. Infrastructure. Always about policies and procedures. It's great stuff. But never about the people. Never about the people. I got a great program for you. da 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 But God says, how about the people? How about their needs? How about their hungers? How about their hurts? How can we heal them, help them, guide them, strengthen them, educate them, empower them, walk beside them? So we're always called down like Zacchaeus. Remember, Jesus says, I want to eat with you. I want to eat with you. I want to eat with you. I want to have a meal with you. Because remember, in the story of Almighty God, we're reminded he came down. God coming in human form, so much so knowing that he had to submit his will to say, I'm willing to now die for people who will never, ever, ever accept me. Think of that for a second. Imagine going to war and people are like, that never existed. What were you talking about? I just, what? Emmanuel, God with us in his call. How about Nicodemus and Lazarus? I spoke about this, this recently just now, but, but John 3, Nicodemus was called out legitimately, spiritually, but also verbally. I'm calling you out, Nicodemus. I thought you were one of the smart ones, and you don't even understand this basics. Don't you read the Torah? Don't you know the character of Yahweh? Not really. Yeah, I'm right in front of you, buddy. I'm right here in front of you. How about Lazarus? In those moments, we have our own tombs. We're bound up by our own addictions, our own hurts, our heartaches. I've known some people, unfortunately, and I was one of them. My identity was in my hurt. And I thrived in it. But remember, Jesus says he weeps. Because remember, this is the same God who could have easily been there early and stopped it. But he comes late on purpose. It's not really then late. <laughs> God's timing. It's perfect. Come out. Come out, Mosaic, from sin. Come out, Mosaic, from idolatry. Come out, Mosaic, from wrong thinking. Come out, Mosaic, from whatever it is hiding you and or burning you down or bondage or pain or suffering. Come out, Jesus says. Come out into this new calling now. Like our brothers and sisters, the Israelites from the Ten Commandments come out from the Egyptian mindset and spirituality. And now go into this new covenant, this new land of milk and honey that I give you because you are my children. I love you. And all I want you to do is to be in your call. Know your identity. You belong. Not because what you do. Because who I am. Mary Magdalene. Whoo! If, by God's grace, I get to heaven, top five. I want to meet. Like, hey, girl, how you doing? <laughs> Mad respect. Name of Jesus, hallelujah. Think of this. In the Old Testament, only two men can give a message for corroboration. You can't have a woman tell a message. Come on now. We all know this. But Mary goes up to a whole bunch of men and say, my Savior lives. And they're like, that's garbage, Mary. Now, in my mind, she goes, oh, really? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Were you there? Hey, hey, James, were you there? Mm. Mm. Oh, Peter, were you there? Mm. I was there at the foot of the cross. And I'm telling you, he is alive. Obviously, the believer, move on. What happens? Jesus walks in, walks to a wall. Ah! What the? Who's in the? It's a, oh, it's Jesus. Oh, Mary was actually telling the truth. <laughs> but Thomas wasn't there. Then the guys go to what? Thomas and say, I don't believe it. I got to see his hands. I got to see his side. I got to see the marks of his forehead. Da, 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 da. Oh, my goodness. Mary was telling the truth. <laughs> you guys are telling the truth. She came forward in her call. And how many times God calls us forward. I'm mindful of the story in which Pilate asked the question, what is truth? In my mind, I'm thinking Jesus goes, wrong question. 
who is true. We're called to come forward and call the full. Lastly, the lost sons. Luke 15, know the prodigal son. We all know what the younger one goes off, debauchery, da 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 da, comes back home. And dad's like, oh, I love you. But the older son is just as lost as the younger one. How dare you, dad? This is against the religion. He smells of pig. He's squandered your money. He has disrespected you, disrespected mom, disrespected me, disrespected the community. And you let this knucklehead come back in. I'm done with you. But son, you have your inheritance. But this is a beautiful day that he's come back to us. He's come back to us. And now, from that story, I'm reminded we're called back. Remember in Revelation, you've forgotten your first love. You shall have no other God before me. You shall have no other relationship before me. You shall have no other job before me. You shall have no other calling before me. I am your first love. And so with this and by this, we're called through our times and tribulations. We're called up by the Almighty God and Holy Spirit. We're called to stand firm, but also to come and fight. We're called down from our own thrones and agendas and kingdoms. We're called out into a new covenant, a new commitment. We're called forward, but also called back to be renewed, to be reminded, but also to live in his kingdom for his glory. The Almighty God does not call the equipped for the qualified, qualified and called into the faith. I'll repeat that. God does not call the equipped nor the qualified, but he equips and he qualifies and he calls you. Let's pray. Holy mighty God, thank you for today. Thank you for this church. Remind us, Lord, that we are called to be your disciples, your faithful servants, the bearing your fruit is by you and in you and for you and with you that we do your work. Remind us, Lord, it's not our church, not our vision, not our mission, not our agenda, but it is yours. Help us to faithfully live in your call as parents or grandparents, as spouses, whatever it is. That's first and foremost identity. We're called to be in you, in you and us, and then help us to be faithful and strong in what we do for you. So bless us and guide us. We humbly ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior.